And today I'm going to detail how the critical postbiotic butyrate and the B vitamin niacin work together to protect and enhance gut health throughout life. The interesting thing about niacin and butyrate is that both activate the same receptor, known as GPR-109A. And while butyrate is an endogenous GPR-109A activator, because our gut microbes produce butyrate from the dietary fiber we consume, niacin is an exogenous GPR-109A activator that we get from our diet and hopefully from adequate daily niacin supplementation. And when I talk about niacin, I am always and forever referring to the original flushing form of niacin known as nicotinic acid. This is the only form of niacin that I use, and it's also the only form of niacin that activates GPR-109A. Butyrate, as part of a thriving, diverse gut culture, induces, via its GPR-109A activation, expression and activity of macrophages and dendritic cells, enabling them to then support the activity of T regulatory cells in the gut, and also cells that produce the powerful anti-inflammatory cytokine interleukin-10. Niacin reproduces butyrate's anti-inflammatory effect on dendritic cells, macrophages, and T regulatory cells. Antibiotics obviously massively disrupt the production and activity of butyrate, and this is where regular supplemental intake of niacin can help, because niacin, through its GPR-109A activation independent of butyrate, will restore the T-regulatory cells depleted by antibiotic treatment, particularly in the colon, while also strengthening the intestinal epithelial barrier and alleviating inflammation in the small intestine. So if you are someone dealing with long-standing, ongoing, antibiotic-induced gut damage, regular intake of flushing niacin can help to greatly reduce the systemic gut inflammation seen in dysbiosis. I always take niacin at the beginning of every meal, along with betaine hydrochloride and digestive enzymes. And this is primarily because, among countless other benefits, flushing niacin also supports stomach acid production while also countering inflammation from anything I might have eaten. Another way to enhance butyrate production is, as I've detailed before, to also make the golden yellow alkaloid berberine a daily part of your life. Because berberine, which is found in plants like Oregon grapefruit, coptis, golden seal, and barberry, tremendously supports the growth of butyrate-producing bacteria in the gut. Berberine on its own also helps to clear the gut of intestinal worms and parasites, thereby providing a far friendlier intestinal environment for butyrate production. Berberine is also quite complementary to niacin because niacin and berberine are both activators for our metabolic master switch known as activated monophosphate protein kinase, or AMPK, and niacin activates AMPK first by restoring levels of the critical coenzyme nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, or NAD, and the NAD then activates sirtuin-1, and sirtuin-1 then activates AMPK while also reducing intestinal inflammation. So you can really see here how and why niacin is a natural companion for berberine, and how both work synergistically to protect and optimize the gut. The best source of butyrate is, again, regular intake of dietary fiber, which we get abundantly from raw vegetables and fruit, not bread and pasta. If you're new to niacin, then start with a low dose, like 100 milligrams or less, especially if you have a sensitive body, and definitely take your niacin with food. Niacin's famous flush looks like a systemic rash on the skin, and on an empty stomach, it feels like a severe itch beneath the skin. So starting with a low niacin dose taken with food is an easy way to gradually acclimate your body to larger doses of niacin if you feel that's appropriate for you. As always, you'll see the very best niacin results with consistent, ongoing daily use, even with a small beginner dose. Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Carter, and I'll see you next time on Enzyme Mental. Stay healthy.